about what I will be teaching very briefly this morning because this will truly be a game changer in someone's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember we said yesterday that grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Remember the scripture? Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. In this kingdom we reign on the strength of what we know not what we want not what we desire your desire is not enough you must be connected to the truths and the secrets that have been given to release what you want knowing what you want is not enough having a desire to get it is not enough you must be equipped with the understanding on how to make it yours redemption has made it possible through the finished work of christ but it takes our engaging through understanding to make it our experience. Are we together now? He says, but we do not yet see all things under his feet. So this, this teaching this morning will be releasing into our lives, I believe, a force that many people so desire, but very few people, pastor, have experienced what I'm about to teach this morning. Please open your heart. Please open your heart. Please open your heart. Open up your spirit. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. The possibilities of the kingdom are only dependent on the truths that we act upon. Please, I, I will keep drumming this. It is not dependent on God alone. God's desire can be helplessly sabotaged by our inability to understand his systems hallelujah it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of your law so this morning i just felt stirred in my heart to teach this it's a subject that i thought i understood myself for many years but when the lord began to open my eyes i was in shock at how ignorant i was Ready to receive the law of favor. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. You're the light of the world. You step down into my darkness. Will you open my eyes? Let me see. Let me tell you something. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. If God does not open your eyes, you will only be reading a storybook. You will be reading a newspaper. The law of favor. Favor is is um, a reality that we all desire there's no one who will argue with the fact that a man's life and a man's success is directly dependent on favor we come from all kinds of backgrounds that by default should keep us failures forever and walking based on human strength sometimes your lifetime cannot even remedy the catastrophe that is associated with the backgrounds that we came from. Are we together? It will take decades to be able to correct the mistakes that have been made to grant us a chance to experience the reality of God's life. So God programmed a system in his dealings with man where men can rise out of the limitations that is associated with their backgrounds, their mistakes, their pain, and the natural disposition of men. We live in a wicked world, the Bible tells us. 
that the whole world lies in wickedness it's not very usual for people to love you in this world are we together yes negative things sell negative news sell we make billions out of conflict if they tell you this man is happy this morning it doesn't sell but if they say exposed something is wrong it sells so we live in a world where our economy is based on being negative as africans for some reason the continent itself has programmed us by default to struggle with success are we together and so if we must enjoy some of the consolations that come with loving god i have taught again and i believe that your pastor is in agreement with this that we do not love and serve god just for things however somewhere along the path of your pursuit there must be consolations to your christian experience is that true yes um, your life cannot revolve around your sacrifices and your pursuit of God indefinitely. There must be a reward system attached to validate that this God you seek is benevolent. Are we together? Favor is the number one reason people succeed. Truly speaking, believe me. Favor is the number one reason why pastors businesses individuals families territories succeed favor is when someone wants to participate in your success when someone ordained by god anointed by god is interested in participating in your success you know i've taught about men god has given me a revelation about men since I found out the mystery of succeeding because of the presence of men, I stopped trivializing men. It is never up to God alone, and it is never up to man alone. He so designed it in his wisdom that there is always a union between God and men. So we must learn to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. There are some things that belong to Caesar, and there are some things that belong to God. You can have favor with God, and not have favor with men Luke chapter 2 and when you read verse 52 speaking about Jesus he says that Jesus grew in wisdom that he grew he increased in stature and then he increased in favor favor with God and have favor with men and the laws that govern them are not the same are we together favor is when someone is willing to invest his time his credibility his resources to help you succeed when God brings a man an individual a personality willing to invest time credibility willing to invest all it takes to make you succeed write this down all success testimonies are directly related to favor all without exception whether or not the benefactors would admit it or be articulate to make you see the favor equation in their success or not doesn't matter all favor testimonies are directly all testimonies are directly related to favor i have learned in my life that one person can open a hundred doors for you just one you know most of this prayer we pray for many people oh god bring them that them sometimes is a very wrong prayer it just takes one person and can open something that no matter how large your appetite is you cannot exhaust it in a lifetime there is such a possibility that one man god's system is always one man one man by a prophet not prophets by just one are we together now in this kingdom who likes you matters write it down i don't care who likes me the most important thing is for god to like me listen carefully to what i'm teaching you in this kingdom who likes you matters a king looks at his wife and dislikes her and she stops being queen immediately 
he looks at a village girl called Hadassah and likes Hadassah and Hadassah becomes queen immediately. Are we together? 1 Samuel 16 and verse 22. Let's see something that happened between Saul and David. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me. Why? Because he's a smart gentleman. Just because I don't have options. Let David stand before thee, before me. For he had found favor, not in our sight, one man, my sight. Are we together? The Bible says, And the king sent for Joseph, gifted but in a dungeon, until a man liked him, loved by God, but hated by a man. And the situation did not change. Are you seeing that now? Loved by God, but because the man to lift him did not like him, he remained there. But when God manipulated the heart of the king, sent for Joseph, he came out of the dungeon, to become a prime minister. This is the mystery behind the sudden liftings of men. That people rise in a mysterious way and you look at them and wonder. Sometimes you look at their lives and you are angry because there's no justifiable reason why they should be there. You don't have favor in ministry, you will never rise. Doesn't matter how anointed you are. <laughs> it's true. You don't have favor. Do you know that some of the most rewarded people in the world are not the most gifted people? Unfortunately, it's painfully so. There are many, many skilled people living unrewarded lives. Sincere Christians, well-meaning individuals, but they have not been educated on the value of favor. And even those who have taught it have not explained the dynamics of its operation. They have just taught it as a mystery that if you are fortunate to receive, there is a science to favor. It can be explained. Are we together? There is a, there is a logic to the operation of favor. Write this down. You are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life. This would shock many of us. You are absolutely responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life. I want to make a statement that I don't want you to be angry at it immediately. Just listen carefully. Favor can be merited. Hmm. Favor is generally defined as unmerited access. Um, I don't entirely believe that. That concept is sincere when you are talking about the favor that is demonstrated by the saving grace of God to men. Is that true? But the operation of favor cannot be unmerited. It is merited. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. We are examining the foundations of our error over the subject of favor. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. If you are a Christian, please read it. It is projected. One, two, read. One more time. Let me use you, my dear. Come. Good understanding is like a woman. She can get pregnant. When she gets pregnant, the name of the baby she gives birth to is called favor. Are we together? Transgression is also another woman. She can give birth to a child. The name of the child is hardship hardship can be explained favor can be explained it says good understanding can birth favor in a man's life it says the way of a transgressor is not a sinner a transgressor is a consistent violator of god's system he can be a believer he can be an anointed pastor a transgressor is not a sinner going to hell no Bill Gates may not be a vocal or pronounced Christian as we know, but he's not a transgressor. So there is no hardship in his life. For some reason, he has aligned 
to the system of God, whether they admit that it is of God or not. You see, there is a dimension of God's power that was programmed in his laws. You don't have to be born again to experience them. Sowing and reaping, gravity, the laws of physics, the force behind their operation is the very power of God. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that how many? All power. Is that true? Including the power that is used by diviners and witches. is God's power. It's only routed by a system that is not authorized. That's what makes it witchcraft. Because the result is correct. But why don't we receive it? Because the only authorized agency, the signature that validates that it is God, is the Holy Spirit. He must be the initiator and the sustainer. So even if the result is correct, God will probe how it was routed. Are we together now? There is a dimension of God's power that is privy to only those who are in the kingdom. It's a dimension of his power that is released through relationship. But there is another dimension of his power that is programmed in his laws. So I can reject him and engage the principles and that power becomes real in my life. Good understanding. Something I understand can program favor in my life. Something I do not understand can program hardship. Hardship is predictable. Hardship can be initiated. Hardship can be sustained. Hardship can be multiplied. Are we together? So I want you to pay attention. Some of this well-meaning socialist view that we carry around, one day my life will change is a joke. Time never changes anything. It only reveals. Are we together? Changes only occur when we engage the principles that have been mandated by God to effect the change we desire. This is one of it. Are we following? So good understanding is like a woman that can be pregnant, give birth to a child, and the name of that child is favor. Transgression is also another woman that can give birth to a child. The name is hardship. God bless you. How do I know whether there is favor in my life? Look at your life honestly. Look at your life honestly. Look at the systems in your life. It tells you because you see, when the favor of God is upon you, it speaks. Favor is vocal. It can speak. You know it. Favor is very, very charismatic. It's not quiet. I'm not talking of personality. The results will force that all men will see. So if there is no favor in your life, I didn't say progress. Favor is different from progress. Hard work can bring progress. Education can bring progress. Some level of diligence here and there can bring progress. Favor is not progress. Favor is a quantum leap where your life changes overnight in the presence of all and sundry. They know that this one is the finger of God. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This is the only way. You see, when God speaks, He speaks because the forces to make His word come to pass have already been released to men. So if God gives, says there will be greater grace in your life, it's because in that word has been programmed the system to make it happen. So something that ordinarily should happen in 10 years happens in 2 weeks. That's not progress. That's favor. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. I'm a believer. You need favor to achieve your goals and dreams in life. Let me tell you this. The absence of favor will frustrate your journey. The absence of favor will lead to your... your it will make you irritated with God. Because at a point in time, you will not be able to trace His faithfulness in your life. And you can't pretend for too long. A day will come. Hardship will push you to the wall. You must shout out and say, God, where are you? What is this? There are preachers who love God, but there's no favor in their life. They are sincere people. They are going to heaven. But it's clear there's no favor in their life. 
There are business people who clearly do not have favor in their life. They are well-meaning Nigerians, brothers and sisters, resident in a great city like Lagos, full of all kinds of abundance and privileges that only pe other people who stay far only imagine and wish, yet the earth has refused to yield. There are people born and bred in this town and nobody has been concerned about their welfare. They are angry at any and everybody. Your anger does not bring favor. If you pay attention to what I'm telling you, your life will change like day and night. It's true. Favor is the mystery, Pastor, behind the lifting of people. You see somebody rise in a way. Have you seen somebody that you were almost tempted to say you are not supposed to be here? Some, a foul play happens somewhere. You shouldn't be here. They are not as vocal as you want them to be, yet they are there. Musicians who are not as skilled as gifted. You painfully honor them and stand before them and watch how gifted you are much more than them. Yet you cannot tell what has created this gap. Every one of us can walk in this mystery. It is the key to rest. It's difficult to give God thanks when you labor for the arrival of things. There is a dimension of labor that is a product of hardship. It's a sign that there is no favor. I look at our lives, I look at people, pastor, and I see the way they dissipate energy and strength for little results. This kind of life will never give you the fortitude to serve God sincerely. Let's be honest. Serving God is not something you just do. You, you, it's, it's, it's a product of your love for Him and sacrifice. But there are things that can be in place to afford you the opportunity to focus. How many people, pastor, go to pray and five minutes in their prayer time, they didn't even know when they kept quiet. They just started moving around because of sorrow. He went to pray in Jesus' name, Lord, I bless you. And all of a sudden, he's thinking, my life. I'm 45. I'm 50. Nothing has changed. How many parents stand before their children and watch their children ask questions they cannot answer? Some of us, this is what happened. And we are already inheriting that tragedy. Shout no way. Are we together? Some of you seated here smiling. The issues that are upon you now, if God does not help, it will break you down. Pastor, did you know that the number, I wish, I wish the doctor, I know there are medical people here. Find out the number of young people with high blood pressure right now. It used to be something for people from 50 years. Now you find out a young guy, 21 years old. Why? Because he wrote jam 11 times. And there was no admission. And for every one of them, he scored above the cut of mark. Because this life, this life is a rude shock to people who do not understand the mysteries. We go around thinking every part of life, can, there are mysteries that if you do not engage, you will stand and cry and not look at the rate of suicide. One of, um, someone that I know last year, I was told that her mother was in a church like this just before everybody true story and she just dropped and died have you not heard of people driving pastor and they forgot they were in the car talking to themselves until they entered a ditch and died no, that does not look like the life jesus came to give he says i am come the thief cometh not john 10 10 the thief, not Satan, the thief, a robber, a taker, a reducer. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and then to destroy. He said, but I am come. This is why I have come. That ye may have life, a quality of life, and to have that more abundantly. Listen, I'm not talking... Look, favor is more than prosperity. Favor is rest. Rest. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he had no favor. 
because there were gaps in his life hallelujah that god can make this year for someone that one month after this conference you come back and say pastor look at my life it, it is, people ask you where did you go to they say please just confess i won't tell anybody where exactly did you go to did you know we associate sudden liftings to the realm of the spirit if someone buys a little golf here and there you don't need to ask him where he went he say well done you are you are you are doing well i mean what a what a humble start god will lift you but if overnight someone's life changes you say come see you know that this heaven is real we are talking about this hell is also real and i don't know you to be like this you are not you are not you have always served god i won't tell anybody i can pray for you if you need help you know what did you join how can i call on your name and end up in shame Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him from them. Over your life. Because you are my God. Regardless of age, regardless of background, if this is true, can we get it today? If this is true, honestly, this is why I came. This is my assignment this morning that something will come upon you for God's sake, Amen. that you will leave this place, my brother, my sister, and go back. And be able to look at your mother and say, we found a way out. After 30 years of pain. And she says, what happened? I know you read this and that. You say, mommy, I found something. You are responsible for activating the flow of favor. When I found this, I cried and cried and cried. I said, why didn't they teach me this? Pastor, why didn't you teach me? You see, that's why you know, you know the heart of a shepherd by how much he's willing to open access for you to receive truth. There are things you cannot buy with money. Are we together now? Yes. There's someone languishing in his room and refused to, came to, to, to come to church this morning. He came probably yesterday and said, I won't come this morning. You see how people miss it? He came yesterday and just to come this morning, he said, no, I'm tired, this life, I'm frustrated. Have you heard people say that? Maybe you've joined them, truly, I'm, I'm frustrated. There are few people in Africa that are born with any notable privileges. Very few people. Very few people. Very few people. I think the Yoruba people, historically, are some of the, the, the people who really have a track record of transferring wealth. Most people don't have that acumen. So by default, most Africans are disadvantaged. It's not new. It's not a thing to shout about. When you shout about it, nobody will join you on the street. They say, is this why you are shouting? What do you think I've been doing on this street? We are all like that. I mean, this is the whole thing. But I've learned that in this kingdom, you can exempt yourself. 
you can exempt yourself from this vicious cycle of pain and regret that winds people from age 1 to age 90 and people go to their graves with sadness looking for opportunities to write books that will cause fear in the younger generation they have created templates out of their frustrations they fried any and everything in this life and have concluded that it's a lie it doesn't work that's why people hate preachers when they see some of the blessings they think that is some kind of manipulation of money and all of that instead of them to sit down and find out what are these people engaging they just make it look like they are manipulating all kinds of things that's why most people most workers hate their superiors they think that they are taking advantage of them no it is good understanding that gave birth to that child called favor and let me tell you in this kingdom you can give birth in one day is it not in your bible have you heard of this mystery that a woman gets pregnant in one day and gives birth in one day how do you activate favor there is a key there are keys to activating favor most people sit down and just wish pray for me no sir no sir no sir please learn what i'm about to teach you now and change your life some of you this evening will not be over until you start experiencing favor Thank you. ready the first key to activating favor is understanding honor write it down honor is the first key to programming favor to your life and in your life anybody that violates honor should forget about favor with men what is favor the recognition the acknowledgement the celebration and even the rewarding of uniqueness that's honor honor is discerning then acknowledging then celebrating then if need be rewarding a person's uniqueness rewarding his or her usefulness in your life are we together you can earn a living practicing honor honor is a stream of income literally like you write real estate oil and gas you can write honor that a man can live off honor Are we together? Let me show you how many of us, though well-meaning, have closed the door of favor. Everything that you honor multiplies in your life. It is true. It is true. Whatever you dishonor is authorized to leave you. A person, a thing, whatever. Look at the way many people dishonor money by the way they use it. They have attitudes of sarcasm. I'm not talking of worshiping money. And so it leaves. You see the way people treat men. Honor. Honor is a powerful key that if you do not know, you will never rise. There are preachers that are anointed, but they understand no honor. Everyone is the same to them. That's why I am telling you, I, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, um, you cannot know how grateful and how happy I am for your man of God and his lovely wife. They understand honor thoroughly. This church understands honor morally. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. Hallelujah. I discern honor. Honor has a body language. Honor is not just when it is vocalized. There is a body language that communicates that I recognize the investment of God upon your life. I recognize the wisdom that is upon your life. Which door did you close to dishonor? Everybody celebrates your brother except you. Because to you he's your brother. That inability to discern, to acknowledge and to recognize what he represents. There are many men of God whose families are dying of the same thing they are anointed to release others from. Because in that home there is no honor. 
I shared a story years ago. Many of you may have listened to it. Pastor, that a woman who had been going through a lot of hardship in her home, you know, the pastor came and people were testifying of breakthroughs. And the woman got up and left the service. You know, members were talking, I hope, you know, I hope her mom is okay. And she went home. When the man finished, hurriedly counseled people and rushed back home. True story. Honey, what's wrong? She didn't talk to him. He just sat down at the table waiting for his lunch. And he noticed that the way she packaged the, the food. Now what is all this ceremony? We've been married for a long time. This is not some young couple. Please, let me have my food. I'm hungry. I have meetings. And this woman never spoke. She came when she brought the last thing. She got down and said, Servant of God, my family needs breakthrough. The man said an anointing came on him. This is his wife. They sleep on the same bed. But the members have been looking at a man so anointed. Say, oh, it's my, my husband. Lift your hands. Oh, husband, husband, you are such a smart man. Listen, human beings are dimensional. Be cheerful lest you generalize dimensions. Your younger brother may be your younger brother until the grace on him begins to speak. Do you have the fortitude to discern what people represent? The sons of the prophet could not see this. Only Elisha, when he said, if you can see me, was he not looking at him? If you can discern that I'm not a normal human being, that I'm a representation of his system, you will receive it. Let me show you how many people have destroyed favor in their life. You talk about your boss, you insult your boss. This is the person that is responsible for handing your salary. You heard that your boss was born under a bridge. And at 30 years, he has a conglomerate that is worth billions. Just because he has some character defaults, you are there running your mouth, you are almost his age mate, and you are still begging for his salary. And you will not listen. Dishonor. Our world is full of dishonor. If we are not cheerful, we may never walk in dimensions of favor. Are we blessed? Dishonor to the Holy Spirit is why we never experience His presence. The recognition. I look at Pastor Shola. Ah, he's a man of God. He's a very great man of No, 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 no. Sir, I recognize. I acknowledge the hand of God upon you. Are we together? Yes. Wisdom is justified by her children. When you see the results of a man, be careful. Don't trivialize it. We live in a society where we have programmed ourselves to trivialize the extent of people's impact. We do it intentionally to show that it's not a big deal. What is it about pastor that you are talking? I mean, is you the only one doing it? Here and there, people are doing it. Is it not Pastor Shola that I know? And the door closes. Even if he prays for you, there are many people I pray for. You've heard me say it sincerely. I only pray for them so that they will stop disturbing me. I know nothing flow to them. This impartation you see is not a charm. There are laws. I have programmed myself by default to practice honor. I'm not ashamed. Practicing honor will sting your ego because everyone also believes he's a champion. But sometimes you need to just get down on your knees and swallow your pride and say, I acknowledge. I acknowledge. Jesus went to his city and could not do many things. There are many wives married to husbands holding strange graces that have never flown to them. There are husbands with wives who have never received anything. Honor, the discerning, the outspoken celebration of the hand of God upon a man. Whatever is at work in a man's life and is not at work in your life, you owe a duty to recognize, to celebrate, to acknowledge. Never get into that pride, that, that indoctrination, that when you trivialize other people, you are trying to show that, okay, me too, I'm not small. That's not the way it happens. You can try to be tall in two ways. Pushing yourself up by climbing on something or trying to cut the head of everybody taller than you so they look like you. 
I know the one that is easier. Climb on something. It's hard to try to cut everybody's head to prove you are tall. If I acknowledge pastor and his wife, does it reduce anything from me? You see, most of these things, people already know what you represent. There's no point putting yourself under pressure. They are not fools. If you are anointed, you are anointed. They know. Do you know, you make your uniqueness worthy of admiration when you celebrate that of others. It's a secret people do not know. If I want to channel you to see the unique grace of God upon my life, I don't do that by saying, look at me. I do that by sowing the seed to you. You hardly criticize a humble man. The humility paralyzes you, kills your excuses. Pride is a sponsor of criticism. Is God giving us wisdom? The next time you see someone trivializing someone important, tell them, no, please, I won't join you in sowing this seed. Why? I'm not ready for the harvest. Remember, every time you criticize the hand of God upon someone, Oh, Benny Hinn, ah, what is this? It's just because these guys were lucky. You see, that kind of talk, lucky to raise a wheelchair. Some of you saw the miracles yesterday. Ah, what's the big deal? Ah, is it, how are we even sure that everybody was here? <laughs> Try it. Everything. When you watch a master do something, it looks easy until you try. Have you tried to learn how to drive? See, I think this is simple now. You sit down there and not even know what you are doing and have to cry for help. God is speaking to us and I want us to learn this morning. We are going to pray. This honor has shut the door of favor. Someone would have given you a job since, but when they were discussing you, your helper noted you for dishonor and said, don't bring this man to your office. I acknowledge she is brilliant, but you bring this lady here, she will shout at everybody. Some of you honor only those higher than you and dishonor those lower than you. It's hypocrisy. The Bible says honor all men. Honor is a culture you must sustain. It's difficult for those higher than you to see your attitude of dishonor because you honor all of them. But your subordinates. I have programmed myself. I have found out that the sacrifice of honor does not kill, it lifts. And so I practice honor. Because of the kind and the dimension of God's grace upon my life, most times when I come for meetings or conferences, you know, there are men of God who come along, you know, in the city. And sometimes they come, and to be honest with you, to be very honest with you, especially for those who don't know me and have just heard about me, sometimes I look at the faces of a few, and I can see some levels of intimidation. Wow, everybody is clapping. That's the apostle coming. And I can be foolish and say, wow, wonderful. I hope you are joining the queue to acknowledge me. And then I come and sit down and close the door of honor. But when you turn and move to someone who secretly acknowledges you but is struggling because success has a side effect and you walk up to them and say, I acknowledge you, sir. Wow. They will now tell you the truth, sir. I've been listening to your messages. I have hundreds of them in my phone. They would never have said that, but you have brought yourself low and you have taught them a lesson. The great ones are the ones who reach out. Ask Jesus. The great ones are the ones who reach out. Not reaching out to prove you are honorable is mediocrity. It's complex. The great ones are not ashamed to reach out because stooping low does not reduce them. Get this in you. Buy it. Listen to it. Pray it. And watch your life change. Honor. Are you blessed? There are six keys. I've just given you one. This one alone can bless you. Yes, there are five more. Truly speaking, if we are honest with ourselves, you will know. Pastor, there are many grandparents that bless the house helps to die, not their children. 
because the children have a track record of trivializing the parents and they call the uneducated house help the man says i've been seeing dreams that i'm going i i come i want to bless you he said sir i can't even speak english but your son is there to leave the arrogant boy come and the man tells you i am 95 years nobody ever told me no i transfer that grace to you it's done in the secret and then the boy gets up and just like a joke he sees a big man and says, i know they said he says sir can you help me the man says yes come and he said but, but this boy is not very smart that's not the issue what is on you is what brings things to you my life is a testimony brothers and sisters oh no you sh i've shared with you my stories Pastor, years ago, I, I know I may have said it in this church, where I saw two old women going to buy sugar cane. I was joining them. Love God, but as broke as anything. The, the little money that I had, I was going to buy sugar cane. And I saw the women. They tied, you know how women tie money? They are rapper. And they were struggling. Their hands were shaking. Old women. And I looked at them. I said, let me help them. I was trying to tell them. I said, don't worry, I'll pay for it. It wasn't more than 100 naira. And they were blessing me, blessing me. And one of the old women looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. A woman that cannot afford money. Listen, there is an anointing in this kingdom called the kingmaker anointing. Those who release it don't experience the result themselves. But they can enthrone you. Just like kingmakers never become kings themselves, but they can appoint and remove kings. There are people. Don't just be deceived just by results. A grandmother may have never had a car, but she can speak to you and give you a sheep. It's called honor. You can see a pastor with just 100 members, and ah, if he's great, he should have results. Be careful. He can speak a word to you and give you a thousand branches. Who have you ignored that is responsible? God spoke to you last year, December finished, you didn't see the word. It would have happened in June, dishonor shifted it to September. It would have happened at November. You know, it kept shifting it. And if God does not intervene now, it will keep shifting indefinitely. Pray in one minute. Lord, grant me the spirit of true honor. Please sit down and just pray from the depth of your heart. The grace to truly discern. Grace. Brothers and sisters, all men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. But the sacrifices and the investment of God's grace have separated men into traders. When you recognize this, happy are you. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Wherever I can stop, we will pray. I don't intend to keep us long. Number two, the second key that programs honor is value. Write it down. If there's anyone under the anointing, they just help them. Value. Everybody say value. What is value? A measure of your usefulness to God, to men, to society. It's called value. Value is a measure of your usefulness. A measure of your usefulness. Either through your skills acquired, through your inherent talents developed, or through impartations that you have received. Value is a measure of your usefulness. And you can measure your usefulness by who is looking for you. If no man is looking for you, it's a revelation that your usefulness is not there or has not been discerned. Are we together? This kingdom was built on a reward system. Your value plays a role in bringing you favor. So you look at someone who is a medical practitioner. Seven years ago, that person would not walk into a hospital. They would throw you away because the value you have not been cultured to produce that level of usefulness and you subject yourself to an educational system and all they didn't change your clothes for seven years they didn't change your name 
all they changed was your mindset they constructed your understanding in a certain way and after seven years the same hospital that rejected you is saying come and practice value value see yet thou a man diligent 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 through value in his business he says he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings being anointed is important but it's not enough you must be valuable are we together as a pastor as a man of god you must be valuable it's not enough to say i'm anointed don't worry what i say don't worry the most important thing is just the power you're not speaking to animals that is the reason why certain people never go to some churches you see that there is not it's not an insult the atmosphere and the extent the information that have been communicated are not worthy of their reception are we together yes you cannot gather ceos and gather heads of services and all of that and then you are you are not communicating something that is relevant to them your research is poor your communication is poor your the ability to articulate your thoughts are poor and say it doesn't matter no it does at least in today's world it does value everybody shout value yes your certificate may give you a job but it's your value your value intrinsically that determines how much you keep rising further value believers i'm sorry to say this but it's true an uncomfortable truth at that believers are lazy people believers are lazy people we are very superstitious in our context and because of that we excuse spirituality for laziness there's no commitment to develop in our minds many pastors are lazy let me tell you the truth and i submit to you ask anyone who knows me i commit myself to study god has anointed me but i know that there are people who are not sick there are people who are not poor there are people who are not in need of breakthrough you have to come up with an intelligence that defies their pride to communicate christ to them it's called value i speak to people at immigration i speak to military people i speak to politicians you must have content that is needed and useful and this is not an impartation you go for it it's the labor dimension of success are we together is god speaking to us this morning you must cultivate problem solving abilities and be exceptional and communicate it with excellence my house is full of all kinds of business proposals and different things to lay hands and speak on and and you open it and look at it and it's complete nonsense complete nonsense nonsense that is written here with minimal humility you can see an intelligent person who can help you present something articulate you don't like what i'm saying love me because the results will so speak in your life that it will scare you it's true are we together this is what church should be that you come for a sunday service and live wiser you are ready to execute the truth on monday not that you just went to a superstitious house and then by monday you are repeating the same circle of mistakes any unbeliever listening to this knows that it's worthy of note this is not an information for christians it is god's system to make men prosper applicable to all men regardless of religious backgrounds for you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth be valuable as a man of God, learn scripture. Don't sit down and quote nonsense. Sorry, you know, they don't, don't mind all these scriptures. No, be serious. Be very serious. We do some of these things and then we laugh about it. That's why someone looks at you and says, No, don't invite this man again, please. I know he's anointed, but look, the kind of people that God has honored us in this church, we must reciprocate, reciprocate back that God. Look at how Jesus treated people. When he saw the centurion, he acted in a certain way. When he saw the certain Jesus did not generalize his treatment. No. He saw Zacchaeus. He said, no, no, Zacchaeus. You are a tax collector. You are an influential personality. To have climbed the tree is enough honor to me. Let's go to your house. Jesus. Your Jesus. 
Why do they keep men in front? What kind of... Are we not all equal? Mr. Man, don't... If you don't understand anything, seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. We have destroyed ourselves and marketed our mediocrity in church because we do not understand the systems. Jesus is passing and a man of influence communicates value. He knows that if I win this man, I have reduced the pain of fraudulent taxes for people. And he says, let me go. Meeting you is worth it. I, I can lose a Sunday service for you because when in, in your redemption is the redemption of everyone under your influence. Jesus was particular to bring influential people. Are we together? Yes. Are you valuable? I'm a graduate. That's not what I ask you. Are you valuable? I have three degrees. That's not what I'm asking you. Congratulations. Are you valuable? To be valuable means that what you have to offer in the table of life is needed and useful. Needed and useful. Is there a demand for what you think you want to do? Is God helping us? You have a restaurant. You are praying. Can your pastor go and eat in your restaurant? Yesterday while we were, we were having dinner, we were just appreciating the, the excellence and the hospitality that this church has provided. I think you should honor the church. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Truly speaking, they paid attention. The pastor's wife was trying to just refresh us a bit at the office and I was touched by her meticulousness to excellence. You will say it does not matter. You are trying to draw somebody you consider is valuable to you and you are drawing it at your terms. You don't receive favor at your terms. No, sir. No, sir. Is God speaking to us? Does your restaurant have the kind of excellence? What does it take to go and learn how to do it well and be professional, be excellent at it? Excellence is a language. There are people who can speak it. Excellence is like Yoruba. The same way when you speak, I'm not Yoruba and so I'll just look and hope that I'm getting what you're saying. But there's someone, there are people, unfortunately, all of them are the wealthy ones you are looking for. The language is excellence. When I hear you speaking my language, I come to you because it's a sign that we have something in common. Could it be that that's the reason why some people have not come to your business? This is not the issue of just blind prayer. God, do it anyhow. If you can't you anoint it, there is a system. In heaven, pastor, where there are no demons, there are gates. You don't just enter anywhere and go anywhere. No. There is a foundation. There are gates. There is a throne room. There is when to speak. Don't just come and say, Jesus, after all, you are, you are love. What is wrong? This other angel doesn't... No, 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 no. There is a system of order. In heaven, no sin, no fasting, no demons, yet order still remains. Say, I receive grace. To be valuable. Yes. For some of you, your value may need, may require the humility to acquire relevant skills in whatever field of endeavor, whether professionally speaking or through mentorship, the sacrifice of mentorship. Are we together? There are some of you, you will need to cultivate the inherent abilities resident within you. That you are gifted does not mean is enough to reward you. Has your gift been developed enough to be worthy of rewarding? One gentleman came to me one time. He said he wanted to go to, was it Mexico or UK? He said he's a footballer. I said, you play like who? I don't watch football, but you play like who? Let's not make a fool out of God here. You play like who? Because everyone out there that you are admiring has a minimum, there is a minimum standard of competence. Don't just come and say, pray for me. You go and loiter around Mexico. Nobody invites you to win. You see, the thing with competence is the moment you are ready, the forces of favor start coming. Sometimes, some things you call delay is God's mercy to allow you to prepare. 
so you don't blow the opportunity in the presence of your destiny helpers so she himself will delay the open door you are there binding because there's no knowledge oh to satan and god says look if you came before your boss now you will never be promoted so i made him travel you are crying instead of you to quickly go back your boss will ask you one question and look at you and say i've always known you are smart you are ready to join the managerial team they don't like me just because i'm not this and that it's not true excellence vetoes backgrounds vetoes whatever take responsibility are we together yes ah, apostle people like you you are lucky god just anointed you that's why you are going to every church let let that luck work for you i wish brothers and sisters ask those who know me my hours of sleep are few because you see when you are up here you will do more to remain are we together you see the thing about success is if someone starts shouting now under the anointing you will not be surprised again because it's a dimension you know is possible that means there must be more when you camp around a level for a long time you become stale you are not backsliding but you are not worthy of being rewarded too the easiest part of success is getting it maintaining success is harder than it because your standard is higher So if you have the leading business in this territory, then it means you must do more. If others who are behind you are just doing whatever they want to do, closing their shop by six, say, why is this raining? And you do the same thing? No, sir. No, sir. Why don't you come up with a system of 24-hour service? Ah, boss is human beings. That's the reason why you should be the best. It is that extra effort, the intelligence you have put in your business that makes it a 24-hour service. So the man who can give you another land comes by 2 a.m. and wants the drug and says, I'm surprised. 2 a.m. you are still out there. Yes, sir. So talk to me about yourself. Say, oh, this and that. Do you know? I just had a dream and I saw myself blessing someone. Go and get the land. And somebody who wakes up by night and sleeps by four. Say, why? Say, well, I, I'm a Christian. I must go to church. Can't you create a system of continuity? So that whether or not you are there, it continues running. God is talking. I don't know if I'm boring you this morning, but I came, I came to pour my heart. This thing you see, I didn't get it by impartation. I get, I got it by pursuing uncommon mentors. Although anointed, I would have said, "What is there? You are anointed. I'm anointed. There are sick people. Somebody who needs healing must come and meet me and reward me, and then we remain small." Make up your mind to be valuable. There are people here, some of you I know, you want to get into ministry, and if I ask you why you think you'll succeed, say, sir, you forgot it, you laid hands on me in Ibada. If that's why you think you will succeed, think again. Truly speaking, think again. I'm not trivializing the anointing, but the anointing is only useful in the presence of value. The oil remains small because there was no capacity. The moment capacity was enlarged, the potentials of the oil was revealed. Number three. The third key to activating favor, are we still together? Integrity. Write it down. Integrity. The third key to activating favor in anyone's life is integrity. The word integrity comes from the word integer. Sameness at all times sameness at all times consistency of values at all times integrity is a big key brothers and sisters it's a quality that we seldom have in this nation integrity we are we are bending we are too bending and we justify it there are many of us the lifespan of our values are very small at the presence of any significant challenge you bend to everything we must be men and women of integrity. Integrity in business. Are we together? Integrity in our work with God is true. There are pastors that organize fasting and they don't fast themselves. And then at the rare, at, you know, they just come up and expect. This, this power thing is not a charm. 
you know if you are pretending something, something will expose you for sure. You can't fake a thing for too long. No. Falsehood was not designed to stay too long. It was designed to fail. Everybody say integrity. Integrity in service. Integrity in your love for God. Integrity in keeping to the values that make for great people. There are many anointed preachers who want to be my friends. But I love them so much. I don't resent them. I love the body. But they may never be my close associates. Not because they are not. They are smart people. But I do not see that they have integrity. They can come to your church and tear down everything. They don't have integrity. They can come and find out there is a millionaire in your church and say, Oh, come, meet me at Suzu, please. No, 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 no. no. Integrity. Do you have integrity? The proof of integrity is your consistency in the face of opportunities. Consistency. That if you bend, it can be to your advantage. Yet you refuse. Who for the joy that was set before him? He would have negotiated his way. Is God speaking to us? Can you call yourself a man or a woman of integrity? Don't feel bad. Some of these things I'm sharing, the Holy Spirit is ministering to us and we are seeing areas of correction. It is because great grace, greater grace, wants to come upon your life. That God will make us men of integrity. Integrity is not perfection. Integrity is, is the unwavering fortitude to remain consistent. Regardless of the shame it brings, you are consistent. You do something wrong, you don't explain it. I, I did something wrong. Don't just manage it. No, sir. I did it. It was, it was out of pressure. It's true that I took the money. It was an allocation that was for a project. I was under pressure. If I will be penalized fully, I accept responsibility. And the man looks at you. Integrity is like a virtuous woman who can find it. Who can find it. Do we have people that can remain consistent regardless of consequences? We bend too much in this country. God must grant us grace. This is why corruption keeps eating. You know, let, let me tell you. A, a, a very a very sincere and I'm saying this from my heart you know once you are anointed like this and God grants you any grace for the prophetic you have a lot of influential people and people in government you can ask anybody who knows me especially now the moment I'm in Abuja like this you just say oh this one ah apostle are you around and then most of them one of the mistakes that a man don't collect money from someone who does not have integrity you would have sold yourself. It's a revelation that you are part of the equation. Discipline yourself. Are we together? You preserve your honor. Money is not everything, my brother, my sister. Listen to what I'm telling you. It's you. No matter how much billion or how much million, give yourself a good name. A good name, a good reputation is better than money. Your reputation can be a padlock to your children or a key. There are names when you call today, people say, God forbid me. I thought, I wanted to help you. That name, is it, are you part of that family? No, I'm not. It's just that my father has that. I'm not, I'm not. The people have to beg and explain because the people have corrupted, they've created padlocks, but there are other names. Even when they drive, you say, come. What did you say? You are who? You. Your father had the opportunity to steal in government. But we are witnesses to his integrity. Come. You qualify for the estate. Integrity is currency. You can use it to buy things. If the only thing you use to buy things in life is money, you are poor. There are seven currencies we use for purchasing realities in this kingdom. Finances is the seventh. The anointing is currency. Integrity is currency. Honor is currency. Which one did you use to pay for what you want? It's only money we are looking for. Start using these currencies to pay for things. Relationship is currency. Use it. When you understand these systems, you will use money minimally. 
Because what money would buy, these superior currencies will buy them by far. Get this thing. Get it. You know someone celebrating birthday, package it, put cake on top and give the person. They say, what is this tape? Say, listen, no. Listen. We cry together here. You've seen God change my life. Listen. Listen. Let me give us one more and then we'll pray. If this is all I do this morning, I think we are blessed. How to activate favor number four. Understanding relationships. The fourth key to activating favor in your life is relationships. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that is possible. And we're standing here only because you move mountains. You move mountains. Advantageous connections. Advantageous connections. Everything in life reproduces on the basis of relationship, including your results. Please listen to me. Relationships are advantageous connections. You will never rise in this life without a relationship. Relationship is capital. Relationship is a stream of... I am here in this church today because of a relationship with a dear man of God and his wife. And the relationship is much more than being preachers. Relationship. I was saying yesterday that pastor and his wife, they've charmed me. I've lost the ability to tell them no. Relationship. Listen to me. One correct relationship in your life can bless you. Every influential man has emotions. And when they are connected to you, their benevolence and their resources and their integrity and their resource, whatever it is, flows freely to you. There are many people that we know today that we would have had access to them on the strength of relationship. But our inability to understand and keep relationships will keep making us join long queues long queues at life relationships I've preached messages on that you would want to get that and listen to my life today has changed because of relationships my relationship with the Holy Spirit is why I'm valuable to the world today yes that's why I treasure him treasure him I will not give up the Holy Spirit for anything and anyone my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Yes. 
I've told you who likes you matters in this kingdom. Please don't say it doesn't matter. Who likes you matters. There are people today have had the privilege of giving recommendations on their behalf because the people that they seek on an official note on the strength of the anointing and ministry I have access to these people and I've had the privilege to call and say please not to take you for granted but can you help this person I vet that this person is deserving and I say I pursue you at your recommendation how many contracts have refused to be signed because a relationship is not bribery bribery is a way of hurrying relationship without following due process relationship takes time it stinks your ego you must pay the price because of the value that it can bring to you. Is there anything in your life that can accelerate process for you? You see, every rule that we put around in society is just for coordination. Relationships can exempt you on legal basis. On legal basis. Are we together? The banks stop on Friday for general people. There are people who bank anytime. And it's not because they have so much money. For some reason, they have a relationship with the owner of the bank. You see that? Jesus spoke about the man and Sabbath. That man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. That means it can be manipulated. Are we together now? Yes. God has granted me valuable relationships in my life. Relationships that have brought financial partnership to my life, to ministry. God has blessed and honored several people I know today on grounds of relationship. Show me what relationship has paid for in your life. Let me see the receipt of what relationship has paid for. Your relationship with God and your relationship with men. How many of our loved ones will tell you, I know everybody, I know Governor Ambode. We used to laugh before, what did you do with that opportunity? That now, your contract proposal has been there on the ground for years. May we understand relationships. Do you have a relationship with the police force? Do you have a, a relationship with lawyers? If someone comes to collect your land, is that the time you start to say, ah, oh, please, uh, no. You should have strategic alliances. This is the wisdom of the kingdom. In this day and age, where someone can come and seize the land of a church, seize someone's property. It's not, there were times where Paul had to use his relationship with the Pharisees. He said, no, 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 look. We are one, one. Is, ah, you, we remember. And they fought for him. There are times that it's not just ministerial prowess. You need relationships. I am a benefactor of relationships. And you sow that seed of honor, relationships. You preserve relationships by honor. Are we together? I shared with you yesterday my story that we flew with Professor Wale Soinka on the way he sat on my seat and the air hostess was trying to get him up for me to sit down and I rebuked her. I said, don't do that. So what if I'm a man of God? This is a man, this is a man of global authority. You may think you will forget it until one day when favor brings us together. Are you seeing how this thing works? Oh, young man, I remember you. Where, where do I know you? Sir, he was at the, at, the, at the aircraft. Oh, you were the one that gave me this cup. And he walks you through doors like the angel held Peter. And the doors were opening. Held his hands and the doors were opening on their own. Please take away hardship. Everyone who creates a door has the key. And if he loves you, he can open it. Praise the Lord. When you go back home today, send text messages to certain individuals. Not when you, you want something. Then you now say, Uncle, just to greet you. Five minutes later, the real text now comes. Uncle, just to let you know that the rent is almost here again. I hope you are not embarrassed. Of course he is. You maintain relationships. Sir, just to let you know that I appreciate you. 
I took out time thinking of your impact in my life. Not many people have impacted my life just to let you know you are one of them. That's not honor. That's not honor, sir. Don't do that. So you meet the rest for help the day you need it. Is God speaking to us? Yes. And you see, when you honor the person, most times you will not reply. But it's noted. The human spirit was never designed to resent honor. That they did reply you does not mean they've not noted it. Just keep waiting. One day they will call you and say, um, I've not done anything nice to you. What do I do? This is uh, the spirit. They say, no, no, the spirit. What do you want? He says, sir, we've been looking at a house. We just have 10% of the deposit. How much is it? 50 million. Oh, is that why you are crying like that? See me on Monday. Someone's prayer point answered two relationships. The answer left heaven, but your carelessness towards relationships made it become delay. Relationships. When they say turn to your neighbor left and right in church, you don't even know who is your neighbor left. You don't know who is your neighbor right. You just turn and just because it looks like it. Whereas that person, where your CV is, that's the CEO. Seated there. He doesn't have to be wearing a, a, a designer watch or, or whatever. No. He can be as simple as possible. But holds the key that can change your life. Say relationships. Relationships require tolerance. Relationships require endurance. Some of the people you need are difficult people. Some of them have temper. Some of them have anger. Overlook those things because of the value in them. Are we together? Everybody may not be like you. Some of them are sarcastic. Some of them make you feel bad when you are in their presence. Create a system of emotional immunity. But endure. The day you need them, you will see that the value was worth it. Relationships. When we are in equity state, to receive that impartation from that old Baba for long life, the man looked at us. They said we're pastors coming from a crusade. I thought, you know, you would think that you say, oh, great man, I've been hearing about you. Say, kneel down. All of you kneel down. It's up to me to choose and say, Baba, I respect you, but it's like you've not heard about me. Go online. Relationships. I'm the one in need. The man was not intimidated by whatever people said I was. I have long life. You need it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't pocket your hand and say long life, sir. It doesn't work that way. Is God giving us wisdom this morning? Which relationship did you ignore? Or which are you ignoring right now? That can destroy you. Don't just come and inconvenience people during the rainy days. Isn't it amazing how painful it is when someone has the solution to your problem, but your relationship makes it so difficult? It's not all about money. The investment of relationship. Every one of us here can maintain relationships. Send a text. He may be a billionaire, but your 100 naira recharge card is not an insult to him. It's an investment. That is uh, just to appreciate you. I hear your birthday is next week. When you see politicians come to a billionaire's baby's birthday, they are not fools. A baby, zero years, no, no, one year old now, is celebrating birthday. Someone flies from London, UK, US, and comes to dance before a baby. Is it, was it a baby that brought them here? Come on, we are smart. A baby makes a man to pay first class and come down and then they give the baby a Rolls Royce they are maintaining relationships because the next eight years of that government matters to their business so they come and greet you and then we Christians are there and all these things and then we pay for it in humbling ways you just come and I've come for this quarter of the contract they sorry things have changed the celebration was there and a discussion was made in that celebration and it so happened that your name was etched out. So no, no, I was, I was praying. I was on a retreat. So, well, we're on a retreat. The man talking to you is a spiritual man. Oh. 
Number five, favor provoking prayers. Prayer can bring favor. Yes, sir. Prayer. You can pray your way strategically. Pray your way into the hearts of men. You had Nathaniel Bassi say yesterday that while they were praying and praising, it just came to someone. Do you know there are many people who can give? It's just that God has not told them to give you anything. So don't be angry with them. They are obedient. God has not told them, will they just come and bless you? Ah, he has five estates. Can't he give me a house? Ask God to tell him. Because if God talks to him, he will obey. God can talk to men. God can say, sir, get up. Take this person as your son. And help you. Abba, this thing is not so difficult. He's called the father of spirits. He can talk to men. Are we together? God can talk to a man and say, come and become a financial partner with this ministry, with this person. And he comes and says, sir, I, I came by the instruction of the Lord. God has helped me. I'm successful. And the Lord said, I should be allocating this. Favor provoking prayers. I prayed. I prayed. Prayer can bring favor. Ladies and gentlemen, you can pray. Father, look down on us. Happen to us the pain of this family. Lord, take away this shame for the sake of your glory. Connect us with strategic people. And the spirit of wisdom begins to look for men. And all of a sudden, you get up and while you are sitting in a restaurant, someone just comes. And you greet him. Your face looks familiar. You say, no, I don't know you, sir. He says, really? Well, something is drawing me to you. You remember your prayer. Who are you, sir? That's not the most important thing. Take this card. Come to my office. Um, which of them, sir? Because I'm seeing three cards here with different addresses. Come to this one. And you enter an office that looks like a palace. And see that man, that the restaurant was his own. He said, what are you doing? He said, nothing. He said, can I send you to manage my company in Israel? He said, with all pleasure. He said, are you busy? He said, me? Busy? Busy, busy for what? I'm available. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm saying? The last key, the last key to provoking favor is the impartation of the anointing for favor. There is an anointing for favor. I call it the Esther anointing. <laughs> the Bible tells us in the book of Esther that there was a village girl called Hadassah. Take note, village girl. Are we together? They called on all the ladies in the land. Dress yourselves and prepare. The king is looking for a wife. You can imagine how many of them were meticulously trying to walk. And the wise woman went and met the one who kept the king's women. You know the king. What does he want? He said, come. I will give you a kind of oil. Keep rubbing it on your body for one year. Stand before the king. That's it. Ah, I shouldn't learn how to walk. Just do what I, I am the keeper of the king's women. The Bible says no man knows what is in the heart of a man. Save the spirit of that man. So the spirit searches out. He knows. And he tells you there is an anointing that can bring favor. And Esther kept rubbing that oil. It was doing something to her countenance. All the women who were passing, the king was looking for. Because the king knows what the oil should do. And as soon as he saw her, that's I said, this is it. And it was because of her on the throne that the people of God were saved. There is an anointing that can come on a man. There is an anointing that can come on a church. There is an anointing that can come on individuals. It's true. There is an anointing. Do you believe this? We are going to. Our time is gone. But I bet you it is worth it. It truly is worth it. That you can get something today. I think it was in this church I demonstrated how the anointing works. Let me show you again. Can I use you, my dear? Come. Can I use you to come? I want you to stand there. You are a destiny helper. You are supposed to bring favor. You are the one in need for favor, alright? 
all of you walk and pass yourselves as I illustrate. This is her destiny helper passing her. There is nothing on her. Turn around. Come again. Look at this. Your destiny helper is in Lagos. He keeps passing you every day because the grace on you that should call them. The anointing keep coming again. The anointing is a voice in the spirit. But you came to house of David. Watch this. And something was upon you. Now watch this. Listen to what is about to happen to you. Come. Walk slowly now. Where you were about to pass, but the anointing starts calling. The anointing has a voice. You call it coincidence, but it's intentional. It's a law. Mantles are falling here to pay. Anointing are falling here to pay. For the king to be born, for the king. To arrive, all the five out to be cut for the poor us to arrive. Ali Ali, 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 this man standing before you is what I just acted before you. I was in HICC last week to the glory of the Lord. After the service, I just finished the last meeting. I was on my way going and the protocol told me that a young man was standing before me with the key of a car. I said, what is this? I have never bought a car with my money. All the vehicles God has brought has been favor. This car that they gave, I've not even seen it. I said, please go and discuss with the church people there. They are, they are, I'm, I'm being hosted, so I don't want to break any protocol. And they call right now. It's today that I'm going to look at this thing to see. Does that person not have relatives in need? Your pastor and his wife will tell you testimonies upon testimonies. Pastor's brother said something yesterday while we were in the office. I said, Pastor has a grace that makes men like him. The name is Favor. And the brother said something yesterday. He said, it has always been like that. That while they were growing up, out of 100% of people that come, 70% are looking for Pastor Shola. Grace. That's what carried you from where you were. And brought you to come and sit here. Brothers and sisters, if you believe and can give me five minutes, your life will so change in a way that you will go back and say, God, what is this? Can you begin to blast in tongues and say, Lord, do this? Do
Lord, you took my pain away and then gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will live Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus grew in wisdom. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Some of us are seated here. You came to house of David this morning with pains that only favor can take away. With financial loads on your head that only favor can change. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Pastor, do you know why I wore this suit? You may have forgotten, but you were the one who bought me this suit. It was intentional. I wore it because I wanted to speak on favor. Pastor, by the Spirit, got me this beautiful suit that you all admire. There are two ways to buy it. Use money or use favor. Is that true? Your dear pastor was the one who bought me this wonderful suit. And I decided to come to Lagos with it. I said, oh, I will wear it and preach. It's a point of contact. That that same grace that God has put upon my life and that same grace that God has put upon his life together with his wife, that somebody will carry me. I prophesy right now over your life. Listen to me. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, please believe. I prophesy to you. Wherever you are, whether you are inside or outside, I'm praying for you. The grace that can come upon a man and touch the hearts of men and manipulate the hearts of men to bless that person. Receive that grace right now. Right now, receive that grace right now. Hear me. I prophesy to your finances. The grace Kabatos Kalapras Katabariketo Shibriada Sufia. Shekeos Koso Brandas Kalabaragatu. The grace that can cause a man to receive help from God. I cry to the God of Jeshua and I decree and declare receive supply in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. I pray for every financial pressure that is on anyone under the sound of my voice. Whether it is rent, whether it is the resources for a project, I decree I stand by this grace God has given me. Between now and the next one month, let there be a great miracle. Hallelujah. God who can pick a man from the donkey and place him I want to call forth those who God has spoken to but have refused to respond to the voice of God over your life. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy across the borders of Lagos, the north, the south, the east, the west, wherever your helpers are, I command them to appear in your life now. I command them to appear in your life now. Anyone in this church called jobless, you are looking for a job, I don't care how long, please listen. In the name of Jesus, I come for this conference with an anointing. 
and I decree and declare by the favor of God between now and the end of March return with your employment letter I pray for any and everyone due for promotion I don't know why you have been hindered whether tribal issues whatever it is but in the name of Jesus I declare the God who forced Nebuchadnezzar to stand up and run and say, Oh Daniel, has your God been able to come and lift you and deliver you? I pray for you, may that God touch the heart of your superior and cause them to go. Hallelujah. If you are in business, lift your hands. Whether it's successful or not, just lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, there is a grace for creativity, for imagination, for innovation, and to call forth men that will help you. I stretch my hands towards you. I speak to your business. Receive life in the name of Jesus. Command your business to expand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever has brought your business to its knees, in the name of Jesus, I declare the same way Jesus Christ rose from the grave. I command your business to rise from obscurity. Hallelujah. I pray for students. In the name of Jesus, especially for those in final year, right now, right here, we graduate you in the name of Jesus. Listen, listen to me. I'm rounding up. Some of you have made mistakes. All kinds of things have happened and you need the mercy of God. Just like the hair of something grew back. I invoke the mercy of the God of David over your life and over your academic. From today I declare that every time you pass your helper, may this grace that has come on you compel them to bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, and I pray for you, whoever stands before your helper and speaks negative about your life, just when they want to bless you, a voice comes. No, in the name of Jesus, I cancel the counsel of Ajitophel. In the name of Jesus Christ. He told Mary, thou art highly favored. Highly favored. Listen. I want to pray for every couple here struggling, especially financially. The Bible, I'm led to do this. The Bible says, he that finds a wife, listen, it says, finds a good thing and obtains favor. The very act of bringing a woman to your life should bring favor. So any woman that is not, her life is not bringing favor. I'm not saying you are doing something. Your very presence should cause your husband to experience strange favor. If that is not happening in any family here, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, after this service, let strange favor begin. Strange favor begin. Strange favor begin. There are people looking for capital to lift their business. You've done everything you know to do. Some of them, you are even afraid to mention how much. Just because it's in a few million, don't trivialize favor. Favor is a wonder. Believe me. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May my God surprise you. May the God of your pastor and his wife surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of result you have never seen all through 2017, from January till December together, between now and March, May your eyes see this result. May your eyes handle it. 